So I had this cat that was a bastard. <laughs> oh, really. He would attack me when I walked through the living room on my way to the kitchen. He would attack me laying in bed. He would attack me sitting on the toilet. He would attack anything that moved in this house. He was brutal. Full claws, front claws, back claws, teeth. My roommate named him Galen after a dragon slayer. And that cat would sit by the front door and growl at people as they walked by. He must have thought he was part dragon or dog. So one day, I invited my college boyfriend over. And what did the cat do? He attacked him, of course. So I'm bandaging up my boyfriend's bloody fingers, <clears throat> and he says, I am at least 22 times the size of this cat. And he was relentless. This is the most courageous cat that I have ever seen. And I look at him and say, that cat is not courageous. That cat is an asshole. <laughs> so you should know that I'm a soldier and I cuss. And uh, you know, the army is four whole months older than the Navy. So when people say things like cusses like a sailor, I say, amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend made a common mistake with the cat. He mistook aggression for courage. You do not have to be aggressive, rude, mean, or even confrontational to be courageous. Courage is a long game thing. It takes courage to go to chemo because you have to keep going back over and over again. It takes courage to go to college, close to home or far away, because it's a commitment. It takes courage to own a pet, a dog, a cat, a bearded dragon, because it's commitment that you have to stick to, bastard or not. <laughs> There's a difference between bravery and courage. Bravery is an instant act of fearlessness. It's when you save a person from being hit by a car or throw your body over a landmine to save your team. It's an adrenaline-fueled, immediate action. But courage is the long game. It's a slow burn. Courage is when you know you are afraid, but you do it anyway. If you were to ask a military veteran if they think they were brave, they would flatly tell you no. They would say something like, I was just doing my job, or I was just doing what I know needed to be done. That's because they were afraid, but they still engaged the enemy. That's what they were committed to do. And it takes a tremendous amount of courage to stay committed to something that puts you in danger every single day. So, speaking of danger, I knew when I started the Women Veterans Network that I was walking right into the fire. I mean, it has the word women in it. <laughs> that alone is enough for some people to want to burn it down. Right? I willingly committed myself to support the women that used to do 70 push-ups and 70 sit-ups each in under two minutes and jumped out of moving vehicles with 80-pound packs on their back, right? I volunteered to support the women that volunteered to protect and serve our country. These are powerful women, strong women, and they have to work hard every day to outperform their male counterparts just to be considered adequate, not even equal. As veterans, women are more likely to have a bachelor's degree, be civically engaged, vote, have food security, and be employed than civilian women. Veteran women are strong both physically and emotionally. And yet, veteran women are the fastest growing population of homeless. These amazing, badass women are 58% more likely to be single parents than men, two and a half times more likely to commit suicide than civilian women, and one in four report military sexual trauma. 
I don't know about you, but that pisses me off. Really pisses me off. And so I stepped into that gap, or more aptly, I, I tripped into it. I had a thought one day, I want to bring all of the women veteran leaders around here together so that we can help support our veteran sisters in our area. I am sure I was not the first person to think that. But what was different was in that moment, with that thought, I took an action. It wasn't a wide-eyed, adrenaline-fueled, crazy action. There was no bravery involved. It was a simple thing I did. I just sent an email. I looked up a few email addresses. I typed up a note. I hit send. I'm sure there's some profound phrase that goes along with this anecdote, something like, be the change. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what I hope you're hearing is that it took some courage to start the Women Veterans Network, but not a lot, only a little. Over the course of the last year, as the network started gaining some attention and getting some traction, I started being invited to different places to talk about the work that the network was doing. One of these places was to a room full of men, highly trained military elite men, Navy SEALs, Rangers, Green Berets, etc. So what I know about these men statistically is that 95% of them have engaged the enemy. That was their job. They've all just recently returned from our ongoing wars. I also know statistically that one in five of these men has in some way crossed a boundary, a sexual boundary, with a woman. To be clear, I'm not saying these men are all sexual predators. There's a spectrum in that statistic that ranges from sexual harassment to sexual assault. What I am saying, what I was acutely aware of, is that I was the only woman in that room, and it was a very dangerous room. But I also knew something else about them. They were transitioning. They were trying to build new lives for themselves. So I had a decision to make. I had to decide what I was going to focus on. And then when I looked out into the audience, I noticed that most of the men were wearing the white man's uniform. You know the white man's uniform, right? Blue shirt, button down, brown belt, tan pants, brown shoes. <laughs> There's some guy named Mike in the back going, hey, that is not fair. <laughs> I'm also wearing a blazer. <laughs> so these men, professionally dressed, are showing up to the world in a new and open way. And I have to decide, am I going to focus on the statistics or the blue shirts? Courage is a choice. I have to choose between my message and my fear. And I chose courage. And those men asked me great questions and hard questions, most of which the answers were military sexual trauma, single parenting, and other items that sound like I'm blaming men. But that's not what I was there to do. What I really wanted to do was enlist them. What I really wanted to do was engage these men and ask them for help on my quest for women veterans equality. So that meant I had to be careful in my choice. And I decided that being courageous was more important than being afraid. As I moved through the next year with the Women Veterans Network, I encountered harassment, bullying, I've been insulted, I've been degraded, I've been subverted, I've been, you name it. I've had someone look me in my face, in my eyeballs, and say, I don't believe you. The data of my Women Veterans Network shows its success. It's incontrovertible. I went from 30 members to nearly 500 in less than a year. And yet, there are people who still question my leadership. So for someone like that, who's going to continue to question my leadership in the face of facts, evidence, and argument, 
there's really nothing I can do to change their mind, right? So that's the trick. Do I buckle under criticism? Do I forget my own value and the value of the network and what we're doing? So the hardest part for me about being a leader is actually not leading my team. It's not even leading events or programs or my organization. It's knowing who to let in my head. It's knowing which voices to charge rent space for. It's protecting my precious mental real estate. It's knowing when some jerk needs to be evicted, right? Get out, G-T-F-O. It takes courage, I'm glad you got that. It takes courage <laughs> to know who to listen to, because that means I have to know my own value. There is always gonna be somebody who doesn't like me, doesn't like the way I'm doing it, doesn't like what I'm doing, doesn't like the sound of my voice. But knowing that fact and accepting it gives me power because I can just move right on, right? I can remind myself of my own worth when there's no one else to do it. I can remind myself that I'm valuable, and I can remind myself that most women are worth a million dollars. And when I added up all of the time, money, coaching, mentoring, education, work, experience, and everything that has been put into creating the me that I am today, right now in this moment, turns out I'm worth $1.5 million. That's a big investment in me. Knowing that I'm worth $1.5 million makes a difference in the way I walk into a room. It means I know that I have something to contribute. It means that I have the ability, no matter what my circumstances are, to know that I'm worthy. And when I know my own value, I don't have to be brave. That's the value of courage. Courage is the track that runs alongside my career track. Courage is the tool that gives me the tenacity to keep chasing my dream, to keep going after whatever it is I'm wanting, whatever it is I'm chasing. Evicting those voices was and continues to be one of the most empowering acts of leadership that I have ever partaken in. It allows me to know that courage is one of the most important tools in my toolbox. I can use it over and over and over again. Courage never gets threadbare. It allows me to decide what I want. It allows me to decide what is most important to me. And I get to keep it. I get to own it. And I want to leave you with one last thought, which is this. It's okay to be afraid, and you will be. But do it anyway. Chase your dream anyway, and do it without being a bastard.